Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are working in my sketchbook since today is Monday and we are doing a another gouache painting. I know last week I did a gouache painting official, but because I felt very, I don't know, I was very happy with that one. So I kind of wanted to keep the ball rolling and, you know, still continue to get more and more comfortable with using gouache. And I wanted to do another painting for this week. And probably, I don't know, I don't know if I'll do one for next week or I'll just paint off camera. But I, yeah, I just want to kind of keep the ball rolling so that I can still, you know, feel comfortable using gouache until I hit that, that plateauing point again. So um, before we start, I want to show you guys how I'm setting up my sketchbook and then we can talk about the supplies and materials and then we can go into actual initial thought process and stuff about how I wanted to plan this out. So as usual, I've done this sketch off screen. I started off with the Pilot Color Eno in the color red, and then I did a cleaner sketch on top with the Carmine Red from Coley Race, which is the Prismacolor pencil that you're seeing. And I have a kneaded eraser, which is kind of gross looking at this point. It has so much graphite and other materials in it. So I'm just kneading it to clean it a bit before I start to use it for today's piece. Otherwise, little bits of like, um, I don't know, like lead shavings and stuff might accidentally smudge or crease, not crease, like leave marks on the page. So I don't want that to happen. But you can see that here's the close up before I start to erase. And the reason why I'm erasing this time and why I use two different pencils versus how I used to paint. And I did the exact same process that I did for officials piece. So if you guys watched that one, you'd be very familiar. So Pilot Color Eno, usually dissolves in water so i like to use that one first it's just much easier to erase and i can usually just be as messy as i want and then when i use the prismacolor cola erase the pencil doesn't erase as easily you can if you put more pressure or use a harder eraser you can probably lift off the pencil but because of that i am kind of using it to my advantage so i am taking the kneaded eraser to basically erase my initial lines to make the lines as clean as possible because I know the kneaded eraser will not lift the carmine red off the page. So I basically prepped my page. I once again forgot to put a piece of cardboard or like cardstock, chipboard, anything like that underneath the paper just in case if I did oversaturate, like oversaturate the paper with water that none of that moisture will seep through and affect the pages underneath. Um, but for the most part, I think I kept the paper fairly okay and when I started to do the initial painting. So before I even touch gouache, I like to paint the base colors with watercolor as I am more confident with my color mixing this way as well as I kind of want to do more watercolor painting. It's always my favorite painting medium but so far I'm only using it as a base for my gouache painting recently. Um, so today I'm actually drawing and painting Eki which is basically Ike backwards. And it's kind of like an alternate version of Ike, um, kind of like opposite personality kind of thing, so, which is why the demeanor of the painting is kind of like this. And in the end, I'm gonna add kind of like red splashes of paint, which is gonna look like a little bit like blood. So if that makes you uncomfortable, you can probably stop the time-lapse um, before the end. So yeah, just, just a fair warning, I guess. So. Initially, I wanted to have a different lighting scheme for this and I actually didn't commit to it. So I was testing some stuff out with the watercolor. So you saw me lay down, I think more of an orangey base on the right side of his face. And then I started to add more, I guess like greens to the left side. And my initial plan was actually to get it to be more blue on one side, red on the other or like more like orangey, so we could have that complementary color. And I wanted the orange to be much brighter and kind of act as a, a brighter light. But I noticed that I became very timid when painting. So you're gonna see that when I do gouache, I'm gonna knock stuff back quite a bit. And even right now, I didn't intensify a lot of the area. So I tried my best to add more blue into the upper left. And later on, I'm gonna add more, I think like a darker shadow so we could push the, shadows more and we can bring out the highlights because for me it was harder to keep the page 
bright, I guess, for what I was initially planning because I wanted to keep the page super warm if I could on the right side, but I couldn't commit to it. I was too scared to do it. So uh, I kind of abandoned that idea. I think it's because like on Pinterest, I always see like model photos and they usually have like neon orange lights on one side and then like a purpley blue light on the other side. And I always like the lighting and the color scheme for it. But for me, if it's not in digital, it's harder for me to commit to color schemes because I'm so scared to, you know, play around and kind of commit because there's no going back usually with traditional medium. Now, gouache is a little bit more forgiving and I, as you can see, I'm starting with gouache now. So I like to at least do a base for his skin tone and then any of the lighter areas of the skin so we could establish that and get kind of like a smoother pass on it. Because I've already laid down the watercolor, I usually lay down the watercolor because one, more comfortable, two, it gives me a better idea of how I want to lay down either values or just colors in general. And it helps me knock like the white of the page completely if I needed to. Cause if I miss spots with gouache, then it becomes really noticeable and really patchy. So it kind of gives me a little bit of buffer room if I want to become a little bit more like doing transparent layers with the gouache like I can kind of get away with it especially on the skin because I usually get the skin tone relatively where I want it to be when I add the watercolor so that I don't have to mix so much like white peach colors or pink tones or orange and kind of get the right um, skin tone prior to painting and stuff it's just my color mixing is I feel like weak especially when it comes to traditional medium and stuff like gouache gouache, I don't know, it just scares me a lot. I think it's because I, even though it's opaque enough for me to continue to paint on top if I need to, I find watercolor less intimidating. I don't know if it's because the process of working from light to dark is similar to like a lot of dry mediums versus like having the capability to add lighter tones to darker tones because gouache can be opaque or translucent depending on how you want to use it but for today I actually used that to my advantage a lot it was easier for me to knock back a lot of the darker colors so you can see that I tried my best to knock out and kind of smoothen out a lot of the areas so I did his skin I did his hair and his hair is significantly very blue on the left kind of getting into like a purple area in the middle and then kind of this warmer tone on the right side. So that's what I initially wanted, but once I realized that his hair doesn't read the same color as it should be, which is kind of... How do I describe his hair color? I don't know how to describe it. It's almost ochre-ish, if that makes sense, but like it has some green tones into it. Obviously he had blue tips, but because I'm drawing Eki, which is like the opposite, he has more like pinkish, reddish tones into there. So it was hard for me to balance, so I'm gonna really like knock out some of those dark tones afterwards so we can get more, one, kind of like a hair texture, and then two, to bring back his hair to the same color that it should be. Um, yeah, for the skin, you can see that I had kind of like, like a peachy tone on the right side and then on the left side. I was trying to knock it to be more blue. I'm realizing now that it's not as blue, so I started to, you know, push myself a little bit and make it more significantly blue, cover up more of his face. And I realized this, like, right now, not like during the painting process, but like, I have the my sketchbook right in front of me. I forgot to add the shadow right under his middle finger that's resting under his mouth. So I should have had another blue shadow carrying downwards so that it goes down to his chin because now it looks kind of out of place. Um, and if the light is coming from the right hitting his face, that should be in shadow. So that's something I should have done. Um, yeah, I do like talking about like the process and stuff over the time lapse like this because I can literally see a lot of things I could have fixed in hindsight and I know some of you guys don't like when I like criticize my own art or like um talk about like I wish I didn't do this I wish I did this kind of thing I do think it's nice to 
be self-critical at times so i don't really mind it and i appreciate you guys wanting me to be kinder to my art it's just like things i see afterwards and i think i should take a little bit more time to like take a break step back and check what i miss or what needs to be fixed um oh another thing though some people asked I think it was like a few on the live stream is how I choose colors and I think one person asked specifically how do I choose colors for traditional or for gouache like more specifically I guess and basically I do trial and error so oftentimes when I'm mixing colors on the palette which is off screen onto the left I mix a color that I think looks correct and then I will just like like dab it onto the page very lightly into like a small portion of the painting and if it matches what i want then i will you know go ham kind of use it as much as i can and if it isn't then i will go ahead and you know readjust the paint now i think part of it is because i do have a little bit of an idea about color theory so like if i accidentally make the blue on his face too saturated i know how to knock it back make it less saturated or if it's not a little bit too dark you know i know what to do to make sure it kind of reads the correct value so that's what i did for i think most of the blue shadows in his face because i had a more intense and more vibrant or i guess like more saturated blue under the tip of his nose versus the left side of like those blue shadows and stuff and i think this is like a personal choice i usually also don't draw noses like this but because of the angle i thought it was more appropriate also it's easier for me to get like a deeper shadow and how the lighting would hit the face if i did it like the more simplified way how i usually do it i think it would have read a little bit more awkward a little bit also too harsh of a shadow separating um the two different sides of his face um <clears throat> i kind of talked over like the whole portion where i fit uh, like adjusted his hair color so you can see that i knocked back quite a bit of the dark portions and added in more of this kind of like ochre brown color back into his hair so that we could kind of unify the rest of it because i didn't want his hair to read too red on the right side otherwise his hair really doesn't look like it has like little highlights it will look too much like one seamless color and I didn't really want that and I wanted to make sure that I could have a little bit of the highlights on the left side as well even though that side is majority in darker tone as well as in a cooler area because it's in shadow um but yeah I think for the most part I actually had a lot of fun painting this one I did a, like adjust a lot of the things in his clothing so initially I had his shirt sleeve his collar as well as just like the base of his shirt very pitch black but I decided to knock it back and kind of warm it up so I mixed a bit of a purpley brown color kind of knocked it back so we could add a little bit of highlights and any details that we need um but yeah so I'm kind of doing the scarf last it was kind of the thing I wanted to do last because I wasn't I wasn't happy how I initially painted it so you can see I'm changing the direction of the fold immediately and then I'm adding some purple tones I'm kind of darkening up the red areas and trying my best to create a shape for the scarf that I like because the way how I painted it initially was definitely not correct it didn't really look like it was folding on top of one another this one looks better but a little too sharp i think in some areas so it doesn't really read as folding per se uh, but yeah i enjoyed painting this one i definitely took my time trying my best to make sure i followed what i wanted to initially do which was mostly the color scheme that i had for my watercolor piece but i was okay straying away from it i didn't have that intense shadow casting or curving on top of his like his skull i guess like the top part of his hair I got rid of that because I thought it'd be hard to, for me to paint because I don't know I wanted to get that hair texture in okay so here's where I'm adding the splatters I decided to cover his eyes and his mouth because I don't think blood would go in those areas usually if it got splattered so I tried my best to water down the paint as much as I could and it was watery and kind of drippy but when i hit the brush it didn't give me the splatter that i wanted so in the end i did have to paint some in which i did on his hand and on his face and then kind of on the right side of the bottom part of the page so we can get a little bit more 
So yeah, a little bit of a different vibe from what I usually draw. I know I draw more like happy, cutesier stuff, but this was this was fun. Um, and I actually really like the, the tones and values in here and kind of the hue shift that I have for his hair mostly. Um, but yeah, also I wasn't very careful. I forgot to cover the right page, so I do have some random um, paint splatter on the right side. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I am just peeling off the tape. I taped the border after I did my rough sketch and before I did my clean sketch so that I could erase the border if I wanted to, like any stray lines and stuff. And this tape was really sticky. For some reason when I was doing the coaching, paint, like, coaching piece, it wasn't as sticky. So like I had some bleed through. Also I used like two different tapes I think at that time. So I had a lot of like lifting. But this one kept my borders absolutely clean, absolutely perfect. So I was really pleased with that. I do like the Artex uh, products a lot, so yeah, I, I really do enjoy the quality. Look at that clean peel! <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna go now though. Thank you much for watching today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed watching me uh, paint Eki Eveland. And yeah, I'll leave all the materials and stuff in the description and any of that if you'd like to check out what I was using and stuff. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!